You may be aware that vintage sewing machines often have a capacitor in the foot pedal to suppress TV interference, but you may not know that some Singer featherweights have a capacitor in the machine itself. In this video, I'll show you how to remove that capacitor. The capacitors were to stop interference with analogue TVs, and are no longer needed. They can cause problems if they go bad, which they often do. If you are in any doubt, please consult a qualified electrical engineer. The capacitor is located in the bed of the machine. Lay the machine on its back and remove the drip tray. This is the capacitor here. Use a pair of long nose pliers to loosen the nut. Next, we need to remove the plug receptacle cover, and this is held in place by two screws. Under the cover is an insulating sheet. Remove the plug receptacle, which is held on by one screw. And gently pull out to reveal the wiring connections. It's a good idea to take a photo of the position of the wires before you remove them. The capacitor is wired to all three pins. Carefully remove the wires from the receptacle. Using a small screwdriver may help.
Next, we need to unscrew the motor and remove the drive belt. As you can see, there are four wires to the capacitor. The red, yellow and black wires went to the receptacle, while the green one goes directly to the motor. And I'll just carefully snip this. I'm just freeing the green wire from the rubber grommet to ease removal. As you can see, it goes down the conduit of the motor wiring. Gently ease the motor away from the machine, making sure not to tug on the wires. You can see this little plastic plug on the bottom of the motor. You should be able to remove it easily and unplug the green wire. Gently pull the green wire through and discard. Now remount the motor and belt. You will need to check the tension of the belt before you use the machine. Removing the capacitor has revealed potentially very dangerous damage to the motor wire insulation. This may have gone unnoticed otherwise. This is why it's very important to check all wiring thoroughly before using a vintage machine. I'll repair this with heat shrink tubing until I get the chance to fully rewire the machine. Reattach the wires to the plug receptacle. The wires for the light go to pins 1 and 3, or the yellow and red, and the wires to the motor go to 2 and 3, or the centre pin and the red. Make sure the nuts are tightened securely. Reinstall the plug receptacle and screw into place. Don't over tighten this screw as the receptacle could break.
Next, I have to fit the wires back in. And not forgetting the insulation sheet, replace the cover. I replaced the nut that held the capacitor in place. And refit the drip tray. There should be a spool felt under the large nut to prevent damage. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching.